everybody, it's Franny, and we're back with our friend's 1969 Volkswagen Beetle. In the last episode, we worked on the shifter and got that all sorted, and boy, what a difference that made. And then after that, I started in on the installation of a new muffler, and that just kind of went crazy. So I'm going to push all of that onto this episode, and you're not going to want to miss that. Oh my gosh, what a nightmare that was. Oh, 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 and I've got something else. I've got a new distributor for the car. So the distributor that's on the car right now is a 009, and I'm not a big fan of these things. They have a bad dead spot right off of idle, and you have to mess with the carburetor jetting in order to get them to work properly. Just not a big fan. This is a Petronic flamethrower, but the most important thing is this guy. This is a vacuum advance on this. So I'm really excited to see how this performs in the car. All right, well, let's go back in time and take a look at that muffler installation. I think the best place to start on this muffler project is going to be to remove the tin and the hoses and stuff, because a lot of that's either occluding some of the places we need to get to, or it's directly connected to it. Let's pull out our tubes and all of our tin. With the tin out of the way, our next step is going to be to loosen up some of these bolts on the manifold and the cylinder heads and all that sort of thing. I'm going to hit them with a little bit of liquid wrench here just to kind of get them sort of loosened up a little bit, hopefully. These bolts actually look like they're in really good condition, so I don't anticipate too much trouble getting them all off. Let's start over here on these little 10 millimeters. Yeah, see, not bad. Okay, there's our first one, yay. And yep, they all look really good. So no rust really to speak of. That's super awesome because exhaust work is usually a complete and utter nightmare, especially on these cars. Now for the cylinder head nuts here, that can always be a different story. Oh, look at that. This one's totally not tight at all. Now I'm gonna leave these on so the muffler have something to hang on because when we're gonna be working underneath, we don't want it to fall on us. Well, that's it for inside the engine bay. That was a heck of a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. All right, let's go ahead and raise the car up a little bit and get underneath. It was pretty straightforward to remove those forward extractor clamps. Then I also removed the clamp seals for the heating system. Then finally, the nuts on the rear of the exhaust ports. I have all new hardware here for the muffler. So I'm gonna pull the old gaskets off and replace everything, and then we're gonna hoist the muffler up and put it back into place. It's really just kind of the reverse of the removal. This might be a little tricky, but let's see. Well, here's our problem. As I come up here, this part of the intake manifold is actually a bit low and won't allow me to get on this stud here. Well, I had to modify this end of the muffler a little bit and oblong these holes a little bit. I decided not to modify the car and I decided to modify the part. I don't wanna to put too much stress on that intake manifold at all, that little heater tube that hooks up to this guy. So I've oblonged those holes. Let's see if we can get it to fit. Work this guy on. Yeah, that's kind of going on. There we go. Still kind of tight, but it's on. Now our only trick is going to be to get the gasket underneath this thing. That's going to be fun. And it's rather thick as well. So, well, it's close, but it's still not quite there. I think our biggest problem is the bottom one here. I think I just need to kind of go up diagonally a little more with it. The top one, there's not a lot of meat left up there. I'll try to widen that up a little bit as well, but I can kind of get the muffler on, but then there's no way I'm going to get the gasket that goes on the top here on. So, hmm. All right. Well, let me just continue grinding a bit. All right. Well, I'm hoping that 18th time's the charm. Those holes are pretty oblong at this point, and I'm kind of hoping this is going to work. Why 
It's still pretty tight. All right, getting that guy on is just a nightmare. I don't know, I think the only way I'm going to be able to do this is to loosen up the intake manifold on this side. We're pretty close. I think at this point what I'm going to do is loosen up the intake manifold a little bit on the left hand side just to get this, this tube here up a little bit. And if it's up a little bit, I think I can get this all in and then crush it back down and it'll be fine. I don't think it's going to put too much stress on the actual intake manifold, but I kind of have to get it out of the way to start with. Let me go ahead and loosen up that intake manifold and see if that helps at all. Yeah, now that can come up a little bit. That should work for us. There we go. That's a lot easier. And then we can get our get this up and get our gasket underneath there. There we go. Okay, that's a lot better, huh? I was able to get it on, so that's a good thing. I have to make sure I get it all attached properly and then sort of the, get this washer crushed down before I tighten up the intake manifold. Let me go ahead and install the nuts and we'll tighten them down. Boy, alignment is still being a pain. It's really hard to get those top bolts in from that section off from the intake manifold. With that left side in, I took a look at the right side, but it just would not go in. After hours and hours of fussing with this thing, I had to try something a little bit different. Well, in the end, I ended up drilling the holes out just a smidge in there, just to give us a little more room. I think the problem is not so much the distance, but maybe the rotation of that thing. It's just a little too tight. So I'm hoping that's going to work. Did the same thing on this side because we had so much fun over here as well. This is the right side here. This is that strap I was talking about that connects that sort of bell up there down through to the heat extractors here. And on this side, I was able to get it to work pretty well. It's not perfect, but it is covering it all the way around, which is great. So pretty happy with that. We've got the rest of our clamps on here, but take a look at this. Look how this is, there's definitely a bend there. I mean, it's definitely not straight, so that's kind of strange. Let's take a look at the other side. And on this side, we can see our bell here a little bit better. And look at this, same problem here with the exhaust pipe, just not, not lining up. It's not even remotely straight. Look at that, that's just goofy to me. And then take a look at this guy. So that's the absolute best I can do with this bell to the heat extractor here, it's just pretty horrible. And it's actually open a little bit on the top side. There just was no other way to do it. If I moved it into place enough, then the hose that's up in the actual engine compartment would not connect. So six half dozen the other, I suppose. Everything's all basically hooked back up, but wow, I don't know. Not super impressed with this thing. 
That muffler was a nightmare to get in. Every step of the way that thing fought me, every single bit. So the uh, little heaters that go up to the intake manifold, it wouldn't attach on the right side. It barely would attach on the left side, but that was only after we ground out the mounts on the cylinder heads quite a bit as well. So, oh my gosh, so I had to drill out the uh, holes on these little heat extractory guys, and then I was able to get it in. It's all pretty much back to normal. There's a reason why the fan belt isn't hooked up. I'll get to that in a minute. Everything else seems to be hooked up. I've got our intake manifolds back on. I had disconnected a couple of spark plug wires. Got all the tin back in as well. It all looks pretty good. And over here as well. Now I noticed a weird noise when I took the car out for a little test drive. weird there's kind of some kind of weird noise almost like from the fan maybe it was a bit of a high wine buzz i don't know it was kind of strange and i've been thinking about it what it could have been and then i had pulled the engine through just a couple of turns just to make sure as i put everything back together that everything was okay and listen to this hear that that's awesome that's the squirrel cage blower on the other side of the generator here, rubbing against the backside of the shroud. Oh my gosh. All right. So really, I think the only way to fix this is to loosen up the generator, loosen up the four bolts that hold this whole generator and that whole fan assembly in, move it around until it stops making a fuss, and then lock it all back down again. But I'm going to have to take the carburetor off, the air cleaner, this... Uh, just to get to the top mounts here on the generator. So <laughs> it seems like it never ends on this car. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, we got to fix that. All right. So let's get to it. With the carburetor out of the way, we've got pretty good access to our generator here. We're gonna loosen this big strap that's here at the top and then loosen these four. There's actually four of them. There's one down here and one over here. Loosen these guys up, see if we can adjust this thing and get it to stop scraping. That's the idea at least. All right. Now with that guy loose, you can kind of see it can kind of move around a little bit. There we go. No noise now. That's certainly better, huh? Must have just been under some stress. Well, our noise is gone. That's a good sign. Let's go ahead and tighten up the strap and see just what was causing the noise. Maybe it was the strap. I don't know. Still good. That's good. That's a good sign. Still quiet. So far, so good. Well, let's tighten these guys back up. See if that was the problem or what. Good. So far, so good. All right, that's good. Yay! Woohoo! Well, I guess it just needed to be sort of reset. So there we go. All right. Well, that's that's a good thing. Now I just have to put it all back together. <laughs> Before we get to installing our new distributor, I want to kind of take a look at what we've got here. On this distributor, this is cylinder number one, and the firing order in clockwise is one, four, three, two, or one, 
two, three, four, and counterclockwise. Okay, great. So this wire here, if we follow it all the way over here, is connected to our cylinder number one, which is the forward right cylinder. Great. Number two, second one in the, on the path here, is this one right here. It's cylinder number two, so that's the rear right. And then just going around number three and number four. So we just wanna kinda of get an orientation of that before we start. First step's gonna to be to pop off our distributor cap here. We we'll kinda of push this up out of the way. With our distributor cap off, I'm gonna rotate the engine to top dead center cylinder number one. Now there's a little notch right here in the distributor. This is actually a really small notch in the distributor, but it just gives you an idea of where top dead center for cylinder number one is. All right, so we'll just rotate this around. And boom, there we go. Our little white notch here is lined up with a split in the case. And over here, our distributor rotor cap is pointing towards our little notch, which is just right there. That means we're on cylinder number one. Now this is kind of important because you could have this thing 180 degrees out and you wouldn't be on cylinder number one, you'd be on number three. So just wanna kinda of get that kind of in your head. With our engine in place, I'm going to actually remove the distributor here. So we're gonna loosen up this adjustment, this 10 millimeter adjustment. I'm gonna wiggle this guy up a bit. There we go. And pull it on out, there we go. Now on this distributor, we also have electronic points. So the wire here going up will have a positive and a negative. So just kind of be aware of that. We've got the positive on the left and the negative on the right. The negative should be the only thing that's attached to this side of the coil. All right, so we can disconnect that there and disconnect our positive lead. If you're replacing a distributor and it doesn't have electronic points, you'll only have one wire coming out of it. That'll be the negative, the black one, and that will go to this negative side on the coil. I'm gonna prep our new distributor here. I'm gonna pull the cap off. Here we go, this is a brand new cap. That's pretty sweet, we will use this. And what I wanna do is pull the rotor off and take a look down into the center of this. Now there's a little rubber plug in there I noticed and there's also a bunch of grease around it. So I think they've greased this shaft. So that's pretty sweet from the top. That's just a sort of an annual maintenance item is to throw a little bit of oil into the top of your distributor. But the bottom here doesn't feel like it's really had any real lubrication on it. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil here. Just sort of lube this guy a little bit. Just give it a little bit of love. There we go. All right. Oh yeah, that feels a little bit better actually. In addition, we've got our new rubber O-ring here. I'm gonna hit that with just the lightest little kiss of a little bit of silicone grease. That's just gonna make putting it in a little bit easier. And All right, there we go. Just kind of Work it around. All right, we're all set. And then I'm gonna refit the rotor just so we have some idea where this thing is pointing. All right, so I'm looking around the edge here and no, I don't see a notch here for top dead center cylinder number one. Hmm, okay, well that's fine. We know our engine is already at top dead center cylinder number one and this guy is off center, so this will only go in one way. So I think we'll be okay. This hopefully pointed out here a bit. Kind of hoping it goes in sort of like this. Okay, I think we're in. Yep, feels like we are. Now we're not gonna worry exactly where it is at this point because we're gonna go ahead and time it anyways. But interestingly, the position of the rotor has changed. Now it's locked in, so I know I've got it down, everything's great. And it's pointing really in the direction that the original or the stock distributors would have been. So that's kind of pointed towards cylinder number one. That's your indication that you're in the right orientation and not on cylinder number three. Cylinder number three, it would be pointing back down this way. But that's kind of cool. So it points up 
to cylinder number one. I always think that's kind of cool. Next, we're gonna wanna attach our power and ground leads. Now they give you like six miles of wire here. So I'm mean, cutting a bit of it off and I've gotta add some connectors to it. They didn't come with it, but I've got some connectors, but that's kind of interesting. They didn't bother to give you a set of connectors. It's kind of a bummer. Okay, there we go. Our negative wire goes on the negative side of the coil, black one. There we go. And the positive goes on the positive side of the coil. Super simple. All right, that's that. At this point, I want to set up so that we can do our initial static timing on this. And the connections are to the negative side of the coil and then to pretty much any ground. So that'll work as a ground. All right, and we've got our little meter here. Next step is just to turn the ignition on in the car. Of course, don't turn it all the way so it wants to start. You just want the two little lights in the bottom of the dash to light up. Next, we're gonna back our engine up to our timing mark. For this car, it's seven degrees before top dead center, so it's our second notch here. Just like that. Now, we're gonna rotate our distributor until our meter comes up. There it is. Back off a little bit. Try it again. There it is. Click. Okay, great. All right, at this point, we can lock down the set screw on the distributor, lock it in place. There we go. Now that will give us an initial start. We're pretty close at this point. We're gonna verify everything, but that gives us a great starting point. And we wanna remember to go turn off the ignition. Next on the list is our new distributor cap. Now, even if we wanted to, we really can't use the old cap as it sits because the spark plug wires are actually in the wrong place on the top of the cap. So I'm gonna use the new cap. And I think the easiest way to do this is to actually install the cap first. On our distributor, we have a little notch here that lines up with a notch in the distributor cap itself, right there, and there's no notch on the other side. So we wanna line that notch up with our little tab and it'll lock right into place. If you get this off 180 degrees, it'll just spin, it won't lock in. So there we go. That's the way it needs to be. Okay. On this distributor, our number one cylinder is right here. So on this one, it was over here. And that's why I was saying that you, you, even if the cap will fit, the plug wires are in the wrong place. So if you get confused, pull one of these off and trace it back. Here it is. We can tell here it's going all the way to the front cylinder on the right side, that cylinder number one. So let's go ahead and put that guy in. And I like to pull these rubber guys back a little bit to make sure this seats all the way. There, it feels pretty good. And they're numbered counterclockwise, number two, number three, and number four. And we can see that from our old distributor cap as well. This was number one. So if we rotate it so that this was number one, this one here, which is going over to the right-hand side is number two. It's the next one over, it's going to go here. Put number two in, there we go, here, number three. The last one, the one on the left side in the far rear is number four. Push that, there we go, all the way down. Put a little rubber boot over, okay. And then finally, our coil wire. Push that all the way down, make sure it's seated all the way. There we go, push our rubber boot down. Great, all of our spark plug wires are in, our distributor's in, and we've got an initial timing on it. The final part of our installation is the actual vacuum hose. So we need to install that. It goes here, of course, on our distributor, but it plugs in here on our carburetor. So we're gonna need to remove this. We just need enough hose that it's kind of out of the way. So what do you think? Something like that, maybe. 
At this point, we're ready to actually start the car and start doing some testing. We're gonna be checking our base level advance. We'll pull our vacuum line off to check that out at idle. And then we'll spool the engine up to about 3000 RPM and make sure that it's not exceeding the maximum amount of advance. For the timing, I'm going to be using my timing light here. It's kind of neat. It has a little adjustment on the back of it. So you can actually roll this thing back and forth while the engine is running to check the total advance on it. Cause I don't have a mark for 36 degrees, but this is kind of cool. You can set this guy to 36 degrees and then just read off of the top dead center mark. It's kind of neat. This thing's pretty cool with this little adjustable guy on the back. We have three connections. We have a power and a ground, and then this goes over the number one spark plug wire as close to the spark plug as possible. For our first test, we're gonna check what the sort of baseline advance is at this point. Now I want to make sure that I don't have the advance hooked up to the vacuum line, but I do need to plug it. So we'll put our little rubber plug back on and we'll just sort of push this guy over here out of the way. Next step is to start the car. <laughs> Now normally you would allow the car to warm up before you really do this. You just kind of want it reasonably warm. But since we've taken all this apart, I want to make sure that the advance isn't too crazy before we go out on the road. So this is still a little preliminary, but I think it's going to get us where we need to be. We do want it warm enough to get sort of a stable idle though, whatever that is on the car. Take a look at what we've got. It looks like our baseline is really good here. It's very close to the seven degrees. Now our timing marks here, we could easily see this one and we could easily see this one, but I actually couldn't see that seven degree one very well. All right, well, I think we'll be able to see that notch a little bit better. We're even a little low. We could go up maybe a smidgen higher. Now this is a little scary adjusting this thing while it's running because you're right next to the fan belt. So be super duper careful if you do this. I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit. There we go. There, that sounds better, huh? All right, I think we're a little better lined up. Yep, that looks great. Okay, we can tighten this down so it doesn't move. Next, we'll reinstall our vacuum line. You can hear that vacuum. There we go. Yeah, there we go. You could hear the RPMs come up a little bit. That's because we've got a little bit of advance, additional advance, it sounds like. We can check that as well. Yeah, we can see that we've gone a little ways forward. I think I'm gonna back that off just a little bit. We can see our advance working, that's great. All right, let's see if we can get some kind of idea as to the maximum on this. I'm gonna set the dial on here to about 36 degrees and see where we are. So that's 36 degrees there on the dial. With our dial set to 36, I was looking for the actual top dead center mark to line up with the crack in the case, which it did. So I think we're really, really close. It's 36 degrees of advance and about, I don't know, seven to 10 or so, somewhere around seven or eight or so at idle, which I think is pretty close to the spec of what it actually should be. Really don't wanna be too much further than 36 degrees of advance because you can kind of overcook your engine. All right, with that, we can lock 
knock down our adjustment. At this point, I think we're really, really close on this. I wanna take the car out for a little bit of a drive and see if it's any better. Oh, so nice going into gear. All right. See, that feels smoother to me. It just takes off better. really smooth feels really good actually you know and the brakes feel really good too they just feel much more confidence inspiring so that's awesome yeah I'm pretty happy I think it I think it all turned out really well yeah it just feels nice well, that's gonna do it for this episode and I think this entire project actually. So I think we got a lot done from the brakes. Oh my gosh, that was huge. We did bearings, we did axle seals, we did the shifter and now we've replaced the distributor on the car as well. We got, we got a lot done in this series, huh? Well, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the episode a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. If you like, content like this then go ahead and subscribe to the channel hit the little bell next to it to be notified because we're going to be moving from this car back to the 911 so it's going to be it's going to be pretty amazing working on that car and you're not going to want to miss a minute of that all right well thank you so so much for watching and as always a very special thank you to our patreon supporters until next time safe travels bye